Welcome to Yanka 3D Shapes. Yanka 3D Shapes, released at the end of May 2007, lets you investigate 3D geometry in a flexible, user-friendly environment. A lot of geometry software is complex, you need to build shapes from scratch. With Yanka, you simply drag the shape you want, such as this cube, onto the screen. The toolbar lets you rotate your view. You can also use the toolbar to move the view around or to zoom in and out. There's a range of different camera views too, like plans and elevations. When you choose a predefined view, the camera rotates until it's in the right position, so you see how the different views are related. You can also add measurements to your shapes. Just drag them onto the shape, they'll snap automatically to key points, like corners and the centres of faces. Then, move the free end until it snaps to the other end of the length you want to measure. Once the measurement is attached, it stays in position as you rotate and move the shape. You can also resize shapes, the measurements follow the changes as you do this. As well as length, you can measure the area of a face or the total surface area of the shape. Attach these measurements to the middle of the shape's faces. You can resize shapes by dragging on their edges. As you do this, the measurements you've attached show the changing lengths and areas. Double clicking on a shape opens its properties pane where you can make more detailed changes. Here you can specify exact edge lengths. You can also use the properties pane to rotate the shape in 3D. The reset button moves it back to where it started. In the properties pane, you can also change the colour of the shape and its transparency. Yenka 3D shapes also includes a set of 2D shapes. For example, here's a square. Rotating the view shows that it lies flat on the plane. If you add more squares, you can snap them together. When you see a purple block appear, the squares become linked and a hinge is formed. By doing this, you can construct a net, a pattern which can be folded into a 3D shape. Here we'll make the net for a cube. When you've added all six squares, click on one of the end squares. Then, drag upwards on a corner, you'll see the square fold up. By doing this, you can fold the net into a cube. Remember that you can use the toolbar to rotate the view. This sometimes makes it easier to fold. Once the net has been folded into a cube, you can double click on it and show its properties pane. In the properties pane, click the flatten button and you'll see the shape open out automatically. The fold button lets you reverse this by automatically folding the net back into the shape. You can make any nets you want using Yenka 3D shapes. This time, add a rectangle and two circles. By double clicking on the circle, we can see that the circumference is 12.57 centimeters. Double click on the rectangle and make its length 12.57 centimeters as well. Next, join the circles and the rectangle by dragging them together. Click on the rectangle and drag one of its corners upwards. Because it's attached to circles, the rectangle automatically curves when it's folded. Now fold the circles in the same way to make the net into a cylinder.
as well as making your own nets, you can use some ready-made ones that we've provided. Each one can be folded by hand. Alternatively, if you double-click on the net, you can use the Fold button to fold it automatically. Once the net has been folded into a shape, just drag on its body to move it, as you would with the other 3D shapes. You can also measure lengths and areas on the folded shapes. There are many other things you can try with 3D shapes. Add a cube and double click in it. Then resize it so that its edges are 1cm long. With the cube still selected, you can see this because the edges are highlighted, click the edit button in the toolbar. Then click copy. Next, click Edit again and then click Paste. This creates a copy of your cube. You can do this many times if you like to create a large number of shapes. Move each cube by dragging on the middle of a face. We'll place the cubes together in a line. If you drag one shape over the area occupied by another, it will automatically jump on top of the second shape. Moving it away again moves it back down onto the plane. You can use this to stack up shapes one on top of another and to build compound shapes. In the Measurements Tools folder, You'll also find a volume measurement. Drag this onto a single cube and it instantly calculates the volume of that cube. There's also a combined volume measurement. Drag this onto the stack of cubes and it'll measure the total volume of all the cubes whose faces are attached. The combined volume measurement shows the change in volume when you add another cube onto the stack and when you remove a cube, you'll see the measurement change again. Now add a circle. From the measurements folder, drag an area measurement onto the circle. When you move your mouse over shapes or click on them, you'll see the areas on the edges highlighted. Dragging outwards from the centre of the shape along the plane, resizes the shape and keeps it in 2D. However, dragging upwards from the plane turns 2D shapes into 3D prisms. Here it forms a cylinder. To delete a shape, click on it and then click delete from the edit menu. You can make prisms in this way using all the 2D shapes. Remember to drag up from the plane to make 3D prisms and along the plane to change the size of the 2D shape. When you make prisms like this, it behaves like a normal 3D shape. You can double click on it to change its colour and other settings. You can also add length, area and volume measurements as usual. You can attach more than one measurement to the same place. To move one of the measurements from behind the other one, just drag it at a short distance. If you drag it too far, the measurement will be deleted.
Then drag the edges to resize the shape and see the measurements change. 